This just in, we have official confirmation on what exact pick the San Francisco 49ers used to trade for Chase Young in today's big splash move before the trade deadline. So as you guys already know, it's been reported that the San Francisco 49ers traded a comp third to the commanders for Chase Young. Now, we didn't know exactly which pick it was, whether it was the one for McGlinchey signing with Denver or if it was for Rand Carthon and for D'Amico Ryans signing with their respective teams. Well, Adam Schefter just tweeted out and gave us the clarity that we've all been looking for. The 49ers are sending the comp third that they received for Rand Carthon signing as general manager with the Titans and D'Amico Ryans, who signed as the head coach for the Texans. So let me spell this out for you. The San Francisco 49ers used a pick that they got for free, and they used that pick to go and get the former number two overall pick just a couple years ago, who's 24 years old and has five sacks on the season and is in the top echelon of pass rush win rate on this particular season. They got him for free. Let me say that again. I know a lot of people wanted to see the 49ers go and target a cornerback, but you have to look at the value that the 49ers were able to execute on this trade. And it's not just that they used a free pick to go and get him. They potentially can get this pick back. And I'll tell you exactly how they do that. So the San Francisco 49ers obviously have traded for a player who's playing on the last year of his rookie deal. As a result of that, the commanders opted not to pick up his, Chase Young's fifth-year option, which would have had a, him under contract for next year in 2024. But because they didn't do that, that makes Chase Young a free agent at the end of this year, and more importantly, an unrestricted free agent, meaning Chase Young can sign wherever he wants. He can hit the open market. He can go sign elsewhere, wherever he wants, or he could re-sign with the San Francisco 49ers. Obviously, if everything works out and he finds plenty of success with the San Francisco 49ers and he re-signs with the San Francisco, that's great. You know, you, you got a guy with a comp third, which is a free pick from your coaches and a front office staff member going and hiring elsewhere. And you got a player that you felt could be in your long-term plans for free. Uh, so that's a good sign, but let's just play the hypothetical game. Shall we let, let's say the 49ers decide, you know what, maybe Chase Young played so well that he priced himself out of re-signing with the San Francisco 49ers. We know the 49ers want to sign Ayuk, potentially Hufanga. We know that there's other moves to be made and that the cap is going to start piling up on them. So let's just say, for example, they can't re-sign Chase or what have you, and he goes and signs a lucrative deal with another team. Well, guess what? If he does that, the San Francisco 49ers will have an opportunity to recoup a comp third for Chase signing somewhere else. So in the end, the San Francisco 49ers could potentially get Chase Young for half a season for literally no cost, essentially taking their comp third this year and pushing it to a comp third next year. That's insane. Like we already looked at the Randy Gregory trade and what the San Francisco 49ers did. It was a sixth and seventh round pick swap with one of the worst teams in the league. And at the time, the 49ers were one of the best. So, so theoretically, it could have literally been just a handful of picks that the 49ers swapped with, with the Denver Broncos to get Gregory and the Denver Broncos took all the salary on. So the 49ers are, are paying Gregory the vet minimum. So that trade was like for free. And then you look at them getting Chase Young. Well, that is effectively basically a free trade, uh, especially if it all works out like we just explained. If he signs elsewhere and he gets a payday, the 49ers get a comp third back. That's crazy. Uh, again, I've seen a lot of the comments. We saw a lot of the chat when we were doing this live. 
lot of people wanted Jalen Johnson. Jalen Johnson would have been a, a phenomenal addition, but I don't think it was up to the 49ers. I think it was up to the Bears. And based on what the Bears' asking price was, it didn't look like anyone was going to meet their asking price because you had multiple teams aggressively pursuing Jalen Johnson. But again, this is an exercise in value. And when it came to it, Jalen Johnson just exceeded the value. The Bears were asking too much, more so than what teams deemed him worth, so teams backed off. And they didn't go after Jalen Johnson, and now Jalen Johnson is still a Bear. He didn't get traded to anyone. This is like the opposite of that. This is where the 49ers were able to get an absolute quality player that can fill a need on their defense for using a pick they got for free. And if he doesn't sign with them next year and gets a lucrative deal, they get that pick back. So uh, John Lynch masterclass, um, he's he's done it again. Um, I know, again, we keep talking about and reiterating it, that people wanted to see the 49ers go and attack secondary and get a cornerback. But it is important to remember that the the best friend, of a defensive back is a quality pass rush. And now that the 49ers have a legitimate pass rush, which bookends of Chase Young and Nick Bosa, we know Hargrave and Eric Armstead are quality as well. You have Randy Gregory coming off the bench. Cleveland Farrell has been decent, but he just doesn't have that extra gear that Chase Young has from a pass rushing standpoint. However, Cleveland is quality when it comes to run stuffing. So, the San Francisco 49ers now have a stacked defensive line, and it kind of feels complete at this point. It didn't feel complete earlier because now we can use Chase in different ways. Um, we can rotate these groupings in different ways to make them uh, more favorable for certain situations. And we just didn't have that depth before. And unfortunately, guys like Drake Jackson that we were counting on to be able to be a big impact on the season just unfortunately hasn't kind of reached the level of potential that we thought he was going to be at this year. Doesn't mean that's not going to be the case ever. It's just not where we need Drake Jackson to be this season. So the San Francisco 49ers go and make this move. That's two defensive ends that they have added via trade this year. Randy Gregory, Chase Young. I mean the value that the 49ers have gotten for these two players is just phenomenal. An absolute masterclass by John Lynch at the trade deadline. Uh, again, I can't, I feel like I keep coming back to it. A lot of people were upset because I guarantee you, I can see the comments already piling up before I even posted this video, but he didn't get a cornerback, but we need secondary help. That's where we need the most help. We need cornerback. I understand. I understand we wanted Jalen. Jalen would have been a phenomenal piece. But it starts up front with this team. And right now, where the 49ers are suffering the most is in the trenches. And they're suffering in the trenches on both sides of the football. However, we do know that this team is predicated and built off defensive line depth and rotations and pressures. So that has an opportunity to have a massive impact on the back end. And I think it is a important to important to remember that the 49ers still have Samuel Womack. We have no idea what Daryl Luter Jr. is, uh, but I would imagine that Daryl Luter Jr. could be coming back on the other side of the bye or sometime after that. So it's going to be interesting to see what the 49ers do with the DB spot. But maybe, just maybe, we get enough pass rush out of this group that we see more turnovers forced. We see better back end coverage. We see we just see different types of scenarios than we've seen the last couple of weeks. So, but this is a value conversation. It's a general manager conversation. John Lynch, phenomenal job, phenomenal value, uh, absolutely amazing. I, I, I'm going to go ahead and call this a masterclass by. John Lynch, but you guys also let me know what you think. Do you agree that this is a masterclass move in value based on all the things that we've talked about with the pick and what it could be, um, all those different types of things, the quality player that they got? 
24 years old, man. Chase Young is 24 years old. It's crazy. Uh, let me know what you guys think about this in the comments below. And as always, make sure to like and subscribe for more updates.